I'm going to show you something extraordinary. The material in this sealed tube has three incredible properties. The first is that it's very likely that this material has never existed before anywhere in the entire history of the universe. The reason is that the number of ways of bringing atoms together to make new molecules, new materials, is literally astronomical. The second interesting property of this material is that it functions as an electrolyte for a lithium ion battery. But it uses 70% less of the increasingly scarce lithium and replaces it with sodium. Now, sodium is a widely available uh, element. So we have been partnering with the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory in the United States to synthesize this material and to turn it into test batteries. And here you see one of our collaborators building one of these batteries. And here you see some of the batteries under test. And here I have a little clock that's currently being powered by one of these batteries. But actually, you know, it's the third property of this material that I personally find the most exciting. Because this material was designed using artificial intelligence running on Microsoft's Azure Quantum Elements platform. So what has artificial intelligence got to do with designing new materials? Well, it's, it's really a screening process. So we started with a large number of potential materials, candidate materials. These are created at random, if you like, on the computer. And then we screened them through a series of stages, uh, all of which are empowered by artificial intelligence. Now, this is a fairly traditional approach, but what artificial intelligence brings is a massive acceleration. So we, we were able to accelerate this process by a factor of 1,500. What that means is we can start with a much larger candidate pool. Instead of starting with tens of thousands, we're able to start with over 32 million candidate materials, discover that 500,000 are stable, and eventually narrow it down to the one material, that's the battery electrolyte you've just seen. Now, this is extraordinary, but it's really just the beginning. For example, I said we started with these 32 million materials that are generated at random. But in some work that we uh, published just a few weeks ago called Matagen, and this was mentioned earlier in the fireside chat, we were able to generate materials, not at random, but targeted for specific applications, materials that have desired properties. So if you think about that, it means that instead of exploring 32 million random materials, we could start with 32 million materials that are already targeted to have roughly the kinds of properties that we're looking for. And that represents a further massive acceleration in our ability to explore that huge space of possible molecules and materials. So what you see here is a, a thing called a diffusion model that might be used to generate images, for example. But here it's generating a new crystal. But here you see Matagen generating different crystals having different desired physical properties. Now, it's not just the design of new materials that's being transformed by artificial intelligence. So tragically, every year, over 1.3 million people die from tuberculosis. Now, there are, of course, drugs and uh, antibiotics to treat TB, but the bacterium is becoming increasingly resistant to those drugs. So we've been partnering with the Global Health Drug Discovery Institute to use our AI technology to help design new molecules to target TB. And we were delighted to announce last night that we found some new candidate materials that look extremely interesting. And let me just show you a little bit about how this works. So this uses a technology called TAMGEN. It's a sophisticated artificial intelligence model that can generate molecules, but it can take a candidate molecule as input. So it takes a molecule as input and can optimize it and pr produce a better molecule um, as the output. So what you see here is a starting candidate uh, molecule. And that blue bar represents uh, a measurement of how much of that molecule you need to achieve a certain level of efficacy. Well, after taking TAMGEN and optimizing that molecule using artificial intelligence, we end up with a rather different looking molecule that's 120 times 
125 times as effective as the starting molecule. That means it is comparable with, or even better than, the best available um, molecules today. So we're hugely excited by this, and we're continuing to work with Giddy to refine and optimize uh, these molecules, and we hope one day to take these forward to, uh, to trial. So I've shown you two examples. One, the development of a new battery electrolyte, and the other example, the development of a new drug to target tuberculosis. But this is really just scratching the surface. Everything around you, everything <coughs> that you can perceive, apart from light and gravity, everything you can perceive, including your own bodies, are made of atoms. Atoms brought together in different ways, in different configurations. The number of such configurations is truly astronomical. Artificial intelligence is dramatically accelerating our ability to explore that vast space. We can only imagine in the years and decades ahead what new kinds of drugs, new kinds of therapies, new proteins, new molecules, new materials, new polymers we might create that will impact virtually every aspect of our lives. A couple of years ago, I changed my role at Microsoft, and you heard about my new role leading AI for Science. And it was a personal decision to commit the rest of my career to what I believe is not only the most exciting frontier of artificial intelligence, but I think also one that will prove to be the most important for humanity. Thank you very much.